Hi, this is Alex from Bike Matters. Uh, I recently did my CBT with Hulls and Cam Ryder. I uh, had a great time, so let's give a little video for you to watch, hopefully learn a few bits. Enjoy. So Alex, thanks for choosing Cam Ryder. Um, you've come here today for the CBT. Have you got any idea what the CBT actually stands for? Yes, yeah, so it'd be compulsory basic training. It is, yes, I'm exactly right. Yeah. It is basic. So we're giving you the basic tools in the toolbox to take away with you. And we're looking at the end of the day that you're going to be safe. You're going to be safe yeah. around other people. You're going to be safe out there on the road. And you're going to have that toolbox, take it away with you and add to it. So yeah. go out there, learn more. Get involved with clubs. Get involved with people like the IAM or Rosper or something like that. Yeah, where you can absolutely. go and improve the skills that you already built upon. Yeah, so obviously the basic part, you're building on that. and That's it. Your... So these are the basic skills. Yeah. And to think about it, we're giving you the tools to get on the road and start driving today, whereas your average car driver, you're looking about 46 hours before they're going slowly, yeah. uh, solo. Element A, um, we're going to be talking about clothing and equipment. Uh, element B is going to be practical on site. We're going to go down, have a look at the bike, have a look at the controls, a little bit about what they do for us. Yeah. Um, beyond that, we're going to look at some maintenance. Now, it could be that you don't want to be involved in maintenance at all, and that's not a problem. Put it in a shop and do all your maintenance work. But at the end of the day, you're still responsible for the safety of the machine when you get out on the road. So there's a certain amount of maintenance we need to take into account. Of course, yeah. So we're not going to turn you into an overnight mechanic, <laughs> but we do want to make sure you can check your bike and make sure you're safe on the day you ride. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's great. Okay, we'll then move on to some practical riding. We'll go over to our training area and we'll be riding the motorcycles off-road and we'll be training you from starting and moving away, moving forward to a little bit of road craft before we get out onto the road. So just getting used to the bike beforehand. Before, That's it, yeah. teaching you how to use the bike, a bit about slow control, the use of your brakes, appropriate use of your brakes, yeah. appropriate use of observations when we get out on the road. Perfect, perfect. From there, we'll move on to practical on-road preparation. And basically, you'll be coming across here, we'll be back in the office again, having a chat, and we're going to be uh, talking about things such as your highway code, your conspicuity, how conspicuous you are, um, your speed, anticipation, weather conditions. So we'll go over all these points and have a good chat about those. And if you're happy with everything that we've covered during the course of the morning and the afternoon, then we'll go out on the road ride. We'll take you out on the road and we'll be riding for a minimum of two hours. Just run me through the controls and what you what your common sense tells yeah. you, what so, you know about the controls. From what I'd assume here, you've got the throttle, and as far as I know, the front brake on this side, yep. followed by the rear brake on your right side. So stop and go in, we've all got on the right side here. All good. Left side, you've got your clutch, and then the gear selector down there by your feet. So more gears on the left side, as far as I'm aware. Excellent, sounds like you're very familiar with it. That's very good. <laughs> So just running through the controls that you've just identified, if we have a look at them, you've quite correctly identified the throttle over here. We're looking for a nice, smooth, progressive use of the throttle. So we're rolling the throttle on and rolling the throttle off. We're not snatching the throttle or dropping the throttle at any time. Yeah. The front brake, we're looking for four fingers for control, please. So I'd like all four fingers out there. We've got the starter button. So the starter button is operated by pushing the button. When the engine starts up and takes over, we release the button. Yeah. Um, we've got signal repeaters here that will repeat left and right. So you've got a visual warning down there that the signals are on at the same time. Yeah. Moving across, we've got headlights, high and low, horn and signals. Lovely. So the ignition on the bike, we've got two positions, which is basically off and on. And if we turn it on, you will hear that the system starts up, the fuel pump starts up and the bike goes through a diagnostic check. Now we can see the engine management light has gone off. Yep. We know that the bike's good to start. We've got a green light showing us that we're in neutral. So the bike's not going to race off all of a sudden. Right. So that's on and off. And to start the machine is on the starter button. It's a push of the starter button. Like I said, engine takes over, release the starter button. To yep. quit the engine and turn the bike off, it's just a simple matter of turning the ignition key off. <laughs>
All right, Alex, we've come out to the bike, and what I'd like to do now is just look at putting your bike on and off the centre stand. Yep. Right, Alex, what I'd like you to do now is just, without the engine running, just push the bike around so you can get a feel for the weight of it, and we're going to operate the front brake so you can see how the front brake feels in operation. Cool. A lot of this exercise that we're doing here, what's the most important thing that we're looking to remember? I see. All right, Alex, I think really, I mean, all the controls are important because they're all part of the process, but that clutch is the key component here. Once you've mastered the clutch control, the rest of it's just going to become so easy for you to, to grasp and put into practice. Yeah. You're doing a bang up job of riding in a straight line and controlling your motorcycle. So let's try turning your bike now, shall we? What I'd like to do is a nice oval circuit of our training area, please. Just okay. Carry on riding around. Excellent, you're doing really well at the moment, Alex. And what I'd like to do now is we're turning left. I'd like you to turn right, please. And the way we'll do, well, the way we'll do that is around the figure eight. So you can go both left and right under full control and you can demonstrate your skill even further still. Great. Okay, Alex, that's brilliant. Good job. What I'd like to do now is an emergency stop. Okay, Alex, we're going to do our U-turn in the road. Okay, Alex, we've uh, actually finished all of our manoeuvres on the, on the training area now. Cool. Um, what I would like to do before we leave the area, as I've said, it's a progression towards getting on the road. I'd just like to have a little practice ride around here, pretending we were on the road.
Hi guys, Alex here. Just wanted to say a few words about the road ride section of the CBT. This is definitely the most exciting part of the training as you get to move uh, from the practice area and put the skills you've learnt to use on the road. After a few wobbles to begin with and keeping it slow and steady, we rode around the local village to the test area to get used to riding on the road. I practiced turning right, U-turns and a few emergency stops. We headed to another town about 15 minutes away, which involved taking the main road, allowing me to ride up to 60 miles per hour on the motorcycle for the first time, which did feel amazing. Nothing really describes the feeling of riding the bike on the road, so I won't try and explain that here, other than by saying it's incredible. Even on a 125, you pick up decent speed, and I can tell you that 30 miles per hour definitely feels a lot faster on a bike than in a car. With Jim in my ear giving guidance and some observations, like road positioning and gently reminding me to always check mirrors and lifesavers, we then took some roundabouts through Dis and stopped to have a breather near the Lexham office, funnily enough. Are you happy with everything? Yeah, no, doing? really happy, yeah. I'm going to pretty much shut up now and just give you directions. Sure. So I'm expecting you to ride independently. We've done lefts and rights at roundabouts, we've encountered most hazards, we've done left and right turns. So I'm not going to spring anything on you. The only thing I will spring on you a bit later on is a hill start. Once you're all done on the road, you head back over to the training centre and you find out whether you've passed or not. I'm sure by then you know whether you've passed because you feel really good on a bike or you feel a bit sketchy. For me, I did quite well, so the instructor was more than happy to let me pass. So a huge thank you goes to Camera Rider Harleston for being so accommodating on the day of the CBT, of course allowing us to film the entire process as well. And a massive shout out to Jim for taking me through the test and making me feel comfortable on the road on the bike for the first time. I had my shaky moments, but Jim was there the whole way. So of course, make sure that you check out Cam Rider to see if there's one local to you, because I'm sure that every single Cam Rider is going to be an absolutely incredible place to do your CBT. Thank you.